Today on Rat and Cat, we're going to trace an abandoned trail that used to run between Trout Lake, Washington and a mountain called Sleeping Beauty. Over the last few weeks, as I've been working with old guys who repair stuff, on the mosquito shelter up in the Gifford Pinchot National Forest. I started to wonder where the trail uh, that used to go through there was now. I thought I'd take the opportunity to just look around and see what I could see. The trail was a bit more difficult. Um, I thought it went a completely different direction and it turns out it was just a switchback, the part that I was looking at. The guys that were working on the project there at the, the mosquito shelter, they're all Forest Service, ex-Forest Service professionals. There was a couple of them that could point out right away which trail, where the trail went, and they gave me some clues uh, as well to what to look for. Yeah. First I saw a couple marks and I thought, oh, this is gonna be easy. But then I just kept on getting off. I, it would look like the trail would go one way and then the other way, and I eventually tracked it down to where I thought it went, and it. Uh, crossed into an old skitter trail and crossed the stream and I decided I needed to turn around at that point. Coming back up the mountain though, it was way easier to trace it and I actually came across a couple of blazes and uh, you know they don't make the marks in the trees anymore like they used to because the the old blaze marks which look like a lowercase i uh, damage the trees and I and now they just use uh, a I think it's a foil or an aluminum marker nailed to a tree, but I'd never actually seen the damage that one of the old flares could do to the tree. Not only did it make the, the mark uh, in the tree, it seemed like it had really grown quite bigger. And not only that, all the bark had peeled off from most of the bottom of the tree. You could see it was a really big scar that it had left. It's no wonder that they've changed that technique. I also found some rounds of wood that had been cut and laid down across a little stream. But the trail isn't as even as it used to be because sk there's skitter tracks across it as well. And so those have put tire tracks that'll throw you off and maybe stumps have been ripped out. It it's difficult, but it's fun uh, and really time consuming. Uh, and I wouldn't suggest doing it without a real sense of orientation where you are. People get lost up in the woods all the time and just disappear. Um, in fact, I'm going to be doing some segments about that. The thing I really liked about it was the sense of mystery. I just imagined what were the men and women that traveled this trail thinking uh, as they came up. You know, it's just hard work, I'm sure, uh, but a sense of adventure, a sense of what's around the next corner, what's, what will the next day bring. I also felt a sense of privilege being there uh, because forests, we kind of take forests for granted and this place has been logged. These trees are still young. Uh, they're only, you know, 65 years old and trees grow to be hundreds of years old. You know, I've grown up in the logging community. I've worked in the lumber mill myself and I know how important uh, lumber is to development. Um, and yet I know if we cut the trees any faster, they just get smaller. I think in the 50s they, they felt like the forest was infinite. But now we know that you can only cut it so fast. And in fact, there's only 6% of old growth left. It's sort of a renewable resource, but it's also being reduced by the size of a football field every two and a half seconds. So other countries have completely lost their forests. And to live in a place where I can just walk out in the woods is such a privilege and I just don't want to take it for granted. Every time I go out, uh, I feel a certain sense of awe.